Um, gosh, I'm tangled. Just been getting some twilight flying in. Always a good relaxing time. But I've been struggling to find like a theme or topic for today's video. And I think I've decided what I want to talk about. And that's bad uh, habits. Some bad habits that I've either broken or I'm still working on breaking that affect your flying, like affect the, the, the video that you get while you're flying. There are certain things that I think we tend to want to blame our tune for. And yes, we can do things to our tune to reduce some of these like bad things that we don't want, like bobbling with the throttle or prop wash. But some of these things, I don't know if we'll ever be able to like 100% tune out, at least not for every quad. I mean, there's a lot of variables. Point is, learning to fly in such a way that you kind of avoid those characteristics altogether, I think it's a good skill to work on. Too many things strapped to my head. Okay, to exaggerate the effects, let me just go to a default, I'm changing PID profile here, and okay, now we are on the default PIDs rather than my tune. Um, not saying my tune is great, but I do think it's better than default, so we'll exaggerate some of the things. Let's just start with everyone's favorite, prop wash. Let's go into this split S. All right, see how I waited till kind of like the last minute to get on throttle? There we go, there's that prop wash I'm talking about. When you wait too long and you've already raised your nose, uh, you're gonna get prop wash and it's gonna make your trick much less smooth and the reason we're like tempted to do it that way is so that we can kind of spot our gap so if I want to split ass through this gap here I'm much more confident to get past it level out and then okay line up for my pass back through but you know the result is that it just doesn't look quite as pretty so if you go in with more confidence and don't necessarily spot it so much get in the throttle sooner and it was much smoother uh, as we as we got back on the throttle, so. Do it again here. I think that just looks a lot better and there's kind of like a couple reasons. One being that you're not bobbling your nose. Like, if, you know, if when you wait too long and kind of go past it, you raise your nose. Now I want to go back through it. Now I got to lower my nose back down. So it's this like up, down, Ugh, back through, it's ugly. So you, you reduce how much you're working the pitch stick and you also, getting back on the throttle sooner gives you more time to smoothly apply it so you're not catching yourself. So this is another incorrect, I'm gonna wait kinda long and now I've gotta jam the throttle and you know get back through the gap and it doesn't look as good. But if I start applying throttle before you know I really even start pitching up, you'll see how things smooth out because, here we go, smoothly applying throttle, and I'm pushing myself back toward the gap before I've you know, raised the nose and kind of leveled out. So, get back on the throttle sooner. And that is nice and smooth. I like it at least. This same idea definitely applies to power loops, maybe even more so, where, you know, when you start doing power loops, uh, you're gonna do things like, Go through the gap, go way high, way overshoot it because, and then 
you're gonna wanna spot it like that. I mean, that's how we all start doing our power loops where we go way past it because we're nervous about hitting the top and then we catch ourselves way back here. So again, by, you can still overshoot it, getting on the throttle sooner and not uh, raising the nose so that you have to like bobble around to go back through it, it's gonna end up looking a lot smoother. So here we go again, apply the throttle. Oh, death branch. No. Why didn't I bring that skateboard? Why didn't I bring my new skateboard that I got just for just for walking? Mm, walk of shame. I got gotcha. you. Well, I mean, that right there is exactly why we have that bad habit. We're nervous to go back through the gap, so we want to go way past it, level out to kind of shave off some of that momentum and spot where exactly we want to go back through. But the idea is get really confident with doing your split S's and power loops and get back on the throttle sooner. So you, know, you go over it and before you start pitching up, when you've still got your nose down a bit, start applying start applying power and that, that also gets you out of your prop wash because you'll push yourself forward rather than descending into that messy air. There's a lot of messy air coming out of your props and when you get in that you're gonna get the you're gonna get the shimmies. And again, tuning reduces it, but flying around it is equally, if not more important. Probably more important. I think it's more important. Okay, the next bad habit I wanna you know what? I'm really regretting not having a stick cam. The next bad, the next bad habit I want to talk about is like pumping the throttle, and I didn't. Br you know what? I think this is more important than seeing, seeing my face. So we're gonna go ahead and do. I'll just try to hold my transmitter extra steady. Okay, so pumping the throttle. That's what gives you that nose bob. And again, there are things that you can do to reduce it, like raising the uh, eye gain on your pitch. And also for, uh, for Betaflight users, the, when anti-gravity came out, that feature did a lot to reduce this. All right, see when I pump my throttle like that, my copter is going all over the place. And I've already tuned anti-gravity. I think it could still stand to come up a little bit from where I've got it now. And also again, these are stock pids, so uh, the eye gain on my pitch axis is certainly not as high, which I want, because I want to exaggerate this. So I think, you know, we're tempted when we're uh, skating around to pump throttle as we like go, whoa, 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 whoa. You're gonna do a lot better avoiding pumping your throttle and especially when you're like trying to not hit a seal like in a parking garage it gets tempting to just to just bash on it like this to maintain your altitude but just really practice keeping your throttle at a steady position you're gonna have a lot smoother video if you can get good at subtle changes in throttle so here like as I go through a turn I'll just slowly increase throttle to pull myself through the turn you just go smoothly around it and slowly add throttle. See, I even backed off throttle as I uh, as I uh, came into the straight there. I backed off throttle a little bit too quickly and still got still got a bit of a bob. Hope you could hear all right cuz you were pointed at my hands. Okay. We talked about pulling out of maneuvers like split S's and power loops more smoothly. We talked about not overworking your throttle. Um, now I want to talk about not overworking your other sticks. Um, I think, you know, as we're learning maneuvers and trying to get uh, more smooth, we see little movements and sometimes it's like, again, I've been improving my tune a lot and it's made a big difference, but as I was learning, one of the things I had to accept was that a lot of the movements I saw in my video that I didn't want to be there was me moving the sticks when I didn't want to be moving them. So I'm gonna you know, start going around some turns. It's really easy to kind of overshoot on pitch here and as we go, okay, I've got to pitch up and I've done too much and it's like, oh gosh, and you're just kind of, whoa, whoa. And you know, that's not, that's not my tune. You know, that's, that's me just overworking everything. And if you just focus on moving the sticks as little as possible to accomplish whatever it is that you're trying to do. That's just something I always try to keep in the back of my mind. This is probably the habit that I've struggled with them. Actually, you know what? The first thing we talked about, um, you know, pulling out of the split S is that. That was a, that took a lot of conscious effort. But this, this is another thing I really struggled with. Something that I'm working on right now is completely centering the stick 
for certain like stall tricks. That's something that kind of reminded me of the importance of this. If I go up and try to do like a little knife edge stall, see how there's still some movement there? That's me not actually centering the stick. So if you just really go up, help take your hand off the stick. That's what it should look like. Look at that. Just make sure you find it again. <laughs> And the thing to practice there is don't actually take your thumb off the stick. Center it and center it smoothly and don't let it move. So I'm going to get it, bring it to center. My thumb is still on it, but I'm not moving it in there. Oh, whoa, waited too long. <laughs> Do it for the vlog. And sometimes you want to keep moving it a little bit. That's kind of how you like do that, you know, warped perception of time where you like you know, snap and then slow and then snap again. But when you really want to like stall the world, get that stick centered and don't touch it. Just get it. And you know, that's a very, it's a very different look. And I mean, they're both, they're both good looks depending on what you want to do for a given obstacle. All right, I always overwork my batteries when I do these uh, trick to and just to prove I'm still on stock PIDs. Profile, yep, profile two, and those are stock PIDs, but before I forget, let me put it back. These are my PIDs, these are my PIDs. Oh no, no! My GoPro battery died at some point during that last, well I'm sorry that that uh, that last bit is gonna have to mostly be DVR. Um, such is life when you try to do these like, um, but you know what, I think that's uh, as fine a place as any to stop. I and mean, we covered three, ha perfect title, three habits to, that's something, I don't know. Actually, I do really think those are probably the three um, best bad habits to work on. I'm glad I um glad we talked about this. Thank you for hanging out and you know coming along on a bit of my day earlier and I hope this was helpful. Maybe I'll do a part 2 if um you know help me out with that if there's something that you think that I can talk about. Okay. Um Yeah, I'm going to go home and go to bed. <laughs>